How you doing, Vertical? Awesome, great. It's good. I'm glad to be here today. I'm Pastor Marcus, the worship pastor here at Vertical. And um, it is such an honor and a privilege to, to get to stand on this stage um, to do what I do, to, to not only lead worship and to work with these great singers and, and um, musicians, but um, uh, to have an opportunity to share the word uh, with you all. It is never easy getting up here. I, I always get nervous. My mouth gets dry and I sweat profusely. <laughs> you have no idea what this jacket is hiding right now. You have, but it's honor. Let's give, uh, let's give a big thanks to our pastors, Ken and Kathy, right now. They're not here. They're on vacation. Much needed vacation. Amen. Uh, and I always want to give thanks to the Father for my lovely wife of 20 years. Thank you so much for acknowledging that. Thank you. Y'all have no idea, you know, what she is in my life, but um, I hope I can only repay it to her in the next 20 years. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't ask for that. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, so I, I want to talk with you all this morning about a, a, a subject that is, I'm very passionate about. There are two things in my life that I'm very passionate about. Uh, one just developed over the last five years. Worship is clearly a, a big passion of mine. I love worship and the idea of what worship is. The second is kingdom. I love kingdom. I love to talk about kingdom because kingdom gives me my identity. Kingdom lets me know who I am, whose I am, and what I'm supposed to do with what I know. Kingdom. Do we have any kingdom citizens in the building today? Oh, y'all a little more rowdy than the first, the, the, the nine o'clock. I'm going to count on that rowdiness now. I want you to, want you to stay rowdy. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, Father, whenever there's an opportunity to break bread, to open the word, and that your light will shine on it and illuminate it and give us revelation and clarity. We are grateful, Father, for all that you do. We ask you for nothing right now. We just thank you for everything. We thank you for your hands of providence. We thank you for being a good daddy. You see our needs and you supply. We thank you, Father, that things may not be all that we want them to be right now. Oh, but they could be much worse. So we thank you that we belong to a God who makes all things work together for our good. And so we give you praise today. Father, we ask you for the anointing that makes preaching easy and effective. And we ask you, Lord God, to open our ears and our hearts today so that we will hear something that will change our lives forever. And finally, Father, we ask that this enemy be horrified, you be glorified in the name of the head of the church and your blessed name, Jesus. Everybody shout amen. amen. I'm going to drink a lot of water today because my mouth is dry and I'm going to get some sense sooner or later not to lead worship and try to preach. Uh, but I, I, once again, I'm so glad uh, to, to be here to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, which is kingdom. Kingdom is my identity. It is what I know about myself, not my government, not Marcus Cole, not the name that the government gave me, not, not that, not my social security number, not that, not, not that information. It is who I was born on, on this earth to be. My kingdom identity is who I was born on this earth to be. If I ask you right now with a show of hands, how many of you know who you are? I wonder how, can I see it for a second? How many of you know who you are? That's fair, I like that. Some of you didn't raise your hands because you're like, I don't wanna raise my hand. You always ask me to raise his hand. Others are being truthful saying, I really don't know who I am. And that's beautiful, that's beautiful. I want you to be honest. Listen, because if there's an issue with you and you go to the ER, you first have to go through what? admittance then you can be seen you have to admit where you are in order for the father to fix you when when Adam messed up and it was Adam who messed up I know for years they say Eve that old Eve she messed up it was Adam who messed up because it was Adam who made the covenant with God not Eve I know you feel like, I know it feels like I'm detouring, but I'm not. Adam, being the head, could have covered his wife and said, she messed up, Father. 
but I'm bringing my wife to you and let's get this right. But Adam didn't want to admit to it. So what did he do? He blamed three people. He blamed God, the woman that you gave me was talking to the serpent. And he never himself said, it was me. Admittance, admittance, listen, listen. Admittance is what's important. We have to admit who we are and where we are. I don't quite know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I, don't, I don't get this kingdom thing. What are we talking about? And it's hard to understand kingdom because we live in a democracy. We live in the United States where we elect our president. <laughs> we elect our presidents. And when we don't like them, we say all types of things about them. Huh? So, so it, is a, it is a tough concept to grasp what kingdom is. Because in a kingdom, there is a sovereign king in place. And you don't open your mouth about that king. You don't, you don't, you might do it in your home real quietly. You might whisper it. <laughs> huh? But, but in this democracy, and we're thankful for this democracy. It's 4th of July, it's 5th of July today. You know, we're thankful for this democracy. But my point is, it's hard for us to grasp a kingdom concept when we live in this democracy. So we don't have a king, we have a president. How many of you um, come from countries uh, that were once under Great Britain or another? There you go. Yes, a lot of people, huh? This is awesome. This is awesome. I, t I keep telling you, I'm going to keep saying it. Vertical is, is a pretty amazing place. All these different faces and tongues. and It's a pretty amazing place. Huh? Uh, so uh, you got to understand something that when a king wishes to establish his rule over a territory, he sends an ambassador. When he sends this ambassador, he sends the ambassador to do a few things, right? To affect the culture, the language, and the currency. To affect the culture, the language, and the currency. And this ambassador first must tap into your language, get you to speak the same language, or there will be no true understanding. It's called colonization. All right? It's colonization. And so when we look at the life of Christ, we see clearly now that Christ was a heavenly ambassador because he come to affect our thinking, our language, and then the currency just comes after. Huh? And so not knowing who you are is okay as long as you admit it so that then he can now impose upon you kingdom agenda. All right. I think one of the best scriptures that deal with how to understand kingdom, and this is what I love about Jesus. Big Brother did it better than anybody else. He, uh, he began early in his, his three-year uh, public ministry, he began speaking Things and people didn't quite get it. They didn't understand it. They were like, what is, what, is, what is he talking about? He's using words I've never heard before, right? Then he said, no, 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 no. This kingdom is so important that from now on, I'll only speak in parables because I don't want anybody to jack it up. <laughs> I want you to get this thing because the kingdom is so important. So I think one of the best scriptures that we can point to uh, is found Matthew 6. Matthew 6 and 9, pull this out or get it on your phone or whatever it is. All right, you're going to take some notes today. Is that all right? I'm not going to be before you long. Praise team, stand by. <laughs> Matthew 6 and 9, let's walk through the word. After this manner, therefore, okay, let me give you context. They're asking him here, teach us how to pray. Notice, they did not ask, teach us what to pray. Teach us how to pray. Therefore, this prayer, right, it is not to be recited as if this is the only way to pray. 
what Jesus basically lays out here is a diamond cut example, template for how we should pray. Because there are inferences here that we need to pay attention to. Matthew 6 and 9 says this, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. I love the King James because it says in earth, not on earth. In earth, and we'll come back to that. As it is in heaven. The italicized, if you see this, the italicized means that it was added later. The italicized words in the Bible mean that it was added later. So it kind of, read that last one, as in heaven. Thy will be done in earth as in heaven. Now watch this. Here are the inferences. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That speaks to the authority and character. Your kingdom come. That Greek word kingdom means basilia, meaning royalty, rule, a realm of reign. Your will be done. Now, this is, a, this is a phrase. This is a Greek phrase meaning genoma, genomai, right? Your will be done. And it literally means to generate, to become, be brought to pass, or be fulfilled. But listen, if you listen to the word genoma, it sounds like our word genome. Follow me now. It sounds like our word genome. And genome is the complete set of genes or genetic material present in a cell or organism. Read it again. The complete set of genes or genetic material present in a cell or organism. Jesus gives us a key. And he said, when you pray, pray like this or in this manner. Now, remember, this is not as a re recitation for all prayers. Because now, remember, he had just warned them just, just a few verses back not to pray uh, vain repetitions. So this could not be what he was saying, this is the prayer. He was saying, pray this way, right? So Jesus is saying, acknowledge your Father in heaven. Acknowledge his authenticity and, authenticity and his character. And realize that it is his kingdom, his rule and his reign. And his, his, his will be done to generate the complete set of genes or genetic material present in him in us. Thy will be done. So regenerate in me what is in you. Give me your DNA. That as I walk this earth, I want people to see God in me. We, we, we have a saying, more of you, Lord, less of me. More of you, less of me. And finally, that light bulb went off over my head. And the father said, now that doesn't make sense now, does it? I know what you're saying. It's, it's this humility like, oh, oh, you know, I want people to see God. So you say, more of you, Lord, less of me. Well, let me ask you something. If I needed more water than that's in this bottle, what do I need to do? But when I fill it up, what's going to happen? It's going to overflow, which means if I need more water, I need to get a bigger container. So when I say more of you, less of me, it doesn't make sense because he's saying I'm trying to enlarge you so that I can put more of me in you. This kingdom is trying to break forth. And so we say, God, move into my heart, move into my heart and change me. And I love how C.S. Lewis puts it. He says, we pray this prayer, move into my heart and change me and this, that, and the other. And all of a sudden, he starts knocking out walls. And you go, oh, 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 wait a minute, oh, oh. Knocks down another wing. Oh, oh, what's going on? Oh, oh. He knocks down something else. And he's saying, I thought you told me to move into you. Because I can't live in that little bitty space. I have to expand you so that you can become greater. I'm sorry for hollering at you. I don't mean <laughs> I get passionate about this thing. <laughs> All right. Now, a kingdom. Let's look at a kingdom. A kingdom is a prevailing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, purpose, and intent 
to produce a citizenry of people who reflect his morals and lifestyle. I'm going to say it again. A kingdom is a prevailing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, purpose, intent to produce a citizenry of people who reflect his morals and lifestyle. So, thy will be done in earth, in me. Now, let's look at earth for a second. Earth, not meaning just this planet, but remember the substance from which God made man. What was it? Dirt from the earth. He made man from the dirt of the earth. He took it, formed it, breathed into it, ruach. Yes? He became a living thing, right? Genome. So what's in God is what? Uh-uh. Don't say it that passively. Say it again. What's in God? Say it again. What's in God? I said this in the first service. I hope to get on y'all's nerves by asking you to repeat stuff. Because we remember the stuff that really gets on our nerves. You're going to be going to work tomorrow like, Pastor, what's in us? God is in us. It's in us. What's in God? And one day, something's going to click and you're going to go, what's in God is in me. So the creator of heaven and earth is in me. Oh, I got to borrow an old phrase from the old church. Y'all don't know when to shout. What is in God is intrinsically now in me. Because he breathed. He, he placed himself. Oh man, let me tell you something. Watch this now. The exchange of breath. This is how powerful God is. Has never ceased. That when he breathed into Adam. The process of inhaling and exhaling never ceased. Woo! <laughs> now, now look, we might give up the, the, the process because of, of, of how we're made, but the process of inhaling and exhaling has never ceased from the first time he did it. Because let me show you something. When he breathed into man, man said, but I want to give it back to you. And God said, yeah, but I want to give you this. And man said, but I want to give it back to you. And ever since then, there has been the process of inhale and exhale. This is my worship. This is my praise. There is within me a full-grown Christ. There is within me a kingdom that has come. For some of you, the kingdom is on the way. But that's okay. But for some of us, the kingdom has... <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So God's plan for us was to colonize earth. So he had to send an ambassador who could speak to us. Although he was condemned and smitten, he devoted his last three years uh, into speaking to us so that he could reclaim our thinking, so that he could reclaim our consciousness so that we would know who we are. So the ambassador came to let us know that we are greater than what we think we are. If you have been redeemed, then the price that has been paid to you for you has made you valuable. Problem is, some of you don't realize that you've been 
redeemed. You're a beautiful painting sitting on the wall. Somebody done paid for it. But you don't realize how beautiful you are because you don't see yourself the way the purchaser sees you. And so the full picture of your kingdom come has not been realized because you've allowed life disappointments to rob you. Uh, they say that uh, when a man suffers trauma, a man or woman suffers trauma uh, uh, that they could lose temporarily or long term, lose their memory, amnesia. I said this before that one of my favorite movies is Born Identity. Anybody ever seen that movie? The concept is that there's a man who is special trained, specially trained, spy, uh, whatever he is, and through some accident, some trauma, he loses his memory. In his journey to remember or reclaim who he is, find out who he is, he realizes that people are after him and he doesn't know why they're after him. You ever felt like that? <laughs> why people are coming for you and you have no idea? And you're trying to be nice and sweet like, why did, what? Why did they say that? Why did they do So he realizes that, that people are coming for him. Watch this. But in the exchange, when he gets into a fight, something comes out of him that he doesn't realize is there. And that is his exceptional ability to defuse the situation. That his exceptional ability to crack arms and bones and use broomsticks as weapons and all this other kind of stuff. And he's wondering, why do I know how to do this? And I'm telling you, you have lost your identity. You don't know who you are. But when things happen to you, when the enemy confronts you, there's something that stands up inside of you and says, I will not take this. I don't, hey, 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 listen, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I will not stand for the enemy wrecking my home. You don't know who you are, but you do know there's something inside of you. And that's this kingdom come. I want to make sure before we leave here today, that we get closer, if, if it's not already come for you, that we get closer to this concept of what the kingdom is. It is the consciousness of God. Say that with me. The kingdom is, the, kingdom is the, consciousness the consciousness of God. Well, bro, preacher, back this up. God only knows himself. God only knows himself. He, he knows nothing outside of himself because from him all things were created. So if he only knows himself, then it is not true when we say things like, God understands my sorrows. Oh yeah, I'm going to rub you wrong. Because God can't understand your sorrows. He has to be able to overstand your sorrows, overstand your problems. Because if he is a God who understands it, then that means he's vulnerable to them. I don't know about you, but I don't want to serve a God who can get sick like me. I don't want to serve a God. I don't want to serve a God that deals with poverty. I don't want to serve a God that cannot defeat my enemies. So it's important that my God overstands my issues. Well, I'm lost right now. So what does that mean? That's why he sent Jesus. So Jesus could be touched by our infirmities. And he takes it back to God and says, go easy, pop. <laughs> they got some things they're dealing with. They got some issues. Huh? Trust me, I've been there. I've been that flesh stuff that they wrapped in, that is crazy. <laughs> I felt emotions that I never thought I would feel down there. <laughs> I felt angry. One time I wanted to punch this guy, and then Peter cut the guy's ear off. It was crazy. I had to put it back on it. 
It was nuts. <laughs> so Jesus is touched by our humanity. But God has to be above it. Y'all get that? That's why I can run to him and find safety. He only knows himself. In God, there is no disease. In God, there is no sickness. In God, there is no poverty. In God, there is no depression. Depression came from the enemy. No, I know you know that, but I want to show you how it came. Depression came from Lucifer when once he was high and lifted, but then he saw that he could be like God and was tricked in himself and was kicked out. And when he hit the earth, depression hit. Because depression is, I'll never be what I once was. Y'all with me? So, so his, his design was never to establish religion. His design was to establish relationship. It was never to establish or propagate religion. It was to establish relationship. And I'm talking with a a couple of musician friends of mine a couple years ago, and in the middle of the conversation, the father reveals to me what religion is. Can I share it with you? Yeah. Okay, all right. I was gonna do it anyway. <laughs> the father says that religion is a man who found God himself. And whatever happened in that moment, he said, oh, this is amazing. And he went, and told the people, this is what happened to me. And they said, what happened? I saw a light, and what else? It's like I almost heard angels. And what else? I think I heard music. And what else? And I fell to my knees. I saw colors. It was the most amazing euphoric thing I've ever imagined, in, I've ever seen in my life. And they said, then what else happened? Then I heard a voice. Religion said, then we'll do what happened to him. So there was a light, yes, so let's create light. So, so, so let's, let's generate light. So there was colors, yes, let's, let's devise uh, stained glass windows. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm walking heavy. Uh, if there was music, oh yeah, well let's get the choir to sing. There was, there was angels, let's get the choir to sing. Let's fall to our knees at 9.15 and 11.15. Let's go through a ritual. Let's stand back up and then let's go back down. Let's stand back up, let's go, let's go through these rituals and the closer we get to the rituals, we must be close to the God that that man experienced. That's religion. Perfunctory. To go through rituals hoping to experience the God that this man experienced. And God is saying, don't go through the rituals. Just simply say, I want to have a personal experience too. I, I want to know who you are. I want to see the light. I, I, want, I want to fall to my, oh, I want to fall to my knees. Because to be in the presence of God, let me tell you something, it's heavy. That's what the word glory means, kabod. It means weight. I don't know about you, but if you've ever felt the weight of God on you, man, you can't get up. You try to get up and you start, you start staggering. You start saying, they're like, oh, he's drunk. I'm not drunk as you suppose. This is the power of God on me. The light is also symbolic in so many ways. It's revelation. It's enlightenment. Huh? I'm out of the darkness now. Now I know something. Whew. So his idea was never to establish religion. It was always to establish relationship. Listen, religion is man's way of trying to find the kingdom. All religion is man's way of trying to find the kingdom. Some religions have gotten real close. 
But do you know it's personal? That when I leave this place, when I leave this place, when I truly seek God, none of you will be with me. That when I truly find God, none of you will be with me. It is replete in the Bible that most men who had an encounter with God encountered him by themselves. <sighs> All right. But God desires relationship. He, he desires an intimacy with mankind because that's how it all started. The Bible is not about religion. It is about a king. Write this down. The Bible is not about religion. It is about a king, a kingdom, and a royal family. A king, a kingdom, and a royal family. A king, a kingdom, and a royal family. You, we, are that royal family. It is as if you have been disconnected from a wealthy royal family and no one ever told you that you were a prince or a princess, but you've been having this sense, this feeling all the time that I'm special, that there's something about me. I see you, I see you shaking your head like, yeah, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> they don't know me, they don't know who I am. <laughs> Remember that old phrase, you better ask somebody. <laughs> you are the royal family. You are a royal priesthood. Abba, Father, means he has adopted us into royal priesthood. That, hey, listen to me good. I'm looking at royal family members. You may not understand it. You may not get it right now, but I'm looking at royal family members. I'm looking at people who have the kingdom rich within them. But I, I don't know how you can say that, uh, Bro Cole, because, um, man, I struggle. I struggle with addictions. I struggle with this, that, and the other. I know. Keep struggling. Keep struggling. Keep struggling. When there is no struggle, that's when you're in trouble. But keep struggling because that ain't nothing but the kingdom trying to emerge while pressing down that other urge. That's the kingdom trying to rise up while pressing down that thing that you learned when you were younger. You were exposed to it when you were younger. Somebody didn't watch you. Somebody did not take care of you. Somebody allowed that enemy to sneak in and deposit something in your spirit. And so now you're 30 and 40 years old dealing with stuff while that kingdom is trying to emerge. And you're still dealing with... If I were you, every day I wake up, I would say, let your kingdom come. I'm tired of dealing with this mess. Let your kingdom come. So... John preached this often. He says uh, it was the same thing that Jesus, isn't that amazing? That John was actually preaching the kingdom before Jesus came. He was. As a matter of fact, John was preaching it when Jesus walked on the scene. He was like, oh, you're talking about me. <laughs> John was like, am I really? Are, are you the one? Watch this. John preached this. He says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The word repent is a Greek word that means Metaneho, to think differently or reconsider. For the kingdom, sovereignty, royal reign is at hand. This word, this phrase rather, is at hand, is a Greek phrase. It, it is engedzo, which means approaches. So reconsider, change your mind, for the royal sovereignty of God is approaching. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. Reconsider. Think differently because your royal sovereign God is approaching. Woo! You ever walk into a library, a grocery store, or a, a room period, and people all, almost, all of a sudden look at you really different? And you wonder like, I got some on my face. And you're like, Who's, why, why are they looking at me like that? Because the kingdom just approached. You don't know who you are. 
You don't know who you are. Hey, y'all think I'm playing? Listen, I would not stand before you and make up stuff. I would not stand before you and say something that I do not believe myself. Oh, man. I have... Tr- oh. <laughs> I have lived this kingdom thing. That's all I will believe now. Every song that I sing. I believe this kingdom thing. I believe inside of me there is a healer. I believe inside of me there is a creator. I believe inside of me there is a counselor. So whenever I approach a situation, I approach it with the kingdom. Because I realize that there is no sickness in the kingdom, no poverty in the kingdom. Yeah, I'm getting some things together, but the kingdom come. I'm not perfect, but the kingdom come. (laughs) And when the kingdom has fully come, just like Jesus, you probably won't see me no more. Watch this. Jesus takes a long trip, gets off the boat. Him and his boys walk up the hill and in the distance, basking in the moonlight is a stark naked lunatic who is cutting himself, biting profanity. Jesus approaches. Scripture does not tell us that he came to that man saying, in my name, I'm going to cast you out in the name of Jesus, in my name, right now. It does not tell us that he did that. That sounded good to some of y'all, didn't it? <laughs> I ain't heard no tuning in a long time. Say yeah! <laughs> hey, listen, he did not approach that guy with a whole lot of to-do. Banging symbols and I'm gonna tell you something. He approached him and never said a word. Oh, I must be in the wrong place. He approached him, sorry about that, RJ. He approached him and never said a word. Watch this now. When he approached him, the demons cried out, why have you come to torment us? The demons that were tormenting the man are now being tormented by the kingdom. The kingdom approached that man. (laughs) If the kingdom is within me and there are no lunatics in the kingdom, then why not approach? I want to approach my wife because I think. Then why, (laughs) Frank, can I? No. (laughs) Then when I approach someone who's dealing with a lunatic spirit, guess what's going to happen? Oh, y'all got to know your power. You got to know what's within you. The scripture says that the kingdom is like yeast. Something interesting about yeast is that yeast is seemingly insignificant. Seemingly. You don't have to use a lot of it to bake with. But... (laughs) Yeast never becomes the bread. The bread becomes yeast. And it is best in the heat or under pressure because the yeast expands. Jesus said the kingdom is like yeast. I don't care how insignificant you feel. I don't care how small in stature you are. I don't care what it is. When you got the kingdom inside of you, everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes when the kingdom come. The band coming up, they must be telling me to stop. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Not yet, brother. Mm. First Corinthians 4 and 20 says this, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but power. That shut a lot of people up, wasn't it? They keep talking, kingdom, the kingdom, yeah, the kingdom. You don't even know what the kingdom is. It became a catchphrase. No, seriously, about 10 years ago, kingdom talk became a catchphrase. It happens in church all all the time. 
watch this. Here's another catchphrase. There is a shift in the spirit. God has a brand new season. They all become catchphrases that we exhaust so much so that the power that was in them when we first said it is no longer there. Now they're just words. But the kingdom is not just talk. But 1 Corinthians says it's power. Woo! Romans 14, 17 says it like this, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the Father has come. The Father has sent his son Jesus as an agent so that we can be reclaimed. Matthew 8 and 20 says this. Let me give you some context. Uh, there was a gentleman who was listening to Jesus teach and he became so impassioned that he says, I want to follow you. I'm following you. Let me go back home first and bury my father. And you know the scripture. He says, well, let the dead bury the dead. This is what he was trying to get to. He says, Jesus replied, he says, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his. That word head is a Greek word called kapto. It does not mean this right here. It does not mean rest even. What it means is the part that is to be seized or his authority or his headship. So what he was saying is foxes have their places, birds have their places, but the son of God has no place to place his authority. Because the image of the church right now is of a dwarf. This, this underdeveloped body with this big See, the head will never lose its power. But the body, the sleeping giant called the church, has yet to rise up and match the head. So he is trying, what he is saying is, I'm trying to get my mind in you. I'm trying to get my mind, my consciousness in you. Look at it this way. Philippians 2 and 5 says this, let this mind be in you, what? which was also, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let me close. Ooh, are y'all getting anything with this kingdom? In order for you to believe any of this, you have to become like a child again. You really do. Because so much of this is so fantastic, right? It's fantasy-like, right? To believe that there is a healer inside of you and that you can lay hands, that you can give sight to the blind. Yes, you can. Because he said, these things that you have seen me do, you, you will do what? These things and... Some of us are still struggling with these things let alone the greater. But he's a healer. He's a counselor. He's a friend. And it is all within you. This is who you are. This is your born identity. You have it within you. I want you to tap into it. I want you to tap into it. I say it all the time, you know, if it's got to be a headache, then deal with a headache first. It's like, if you really want to try something out, I'm going to check this kingdom thing out, this healing thing out. Daughter got a headache, lay hands on her and watch her be healed. Some years ago, I was with a group that I sang with and we were in Chicago and we were on stage and we were singing and at some point of our uh, Ministry, we, we would go out to the audience and we would, we would pray with people and lay hands. So one of the guys went out to the audience and he was out there and he was praying for this gentleman that I saw earlier before the show. He was praying for this gentleman and he called for me. So I went down and I, scripture says to lay hands on no man suddenly. 
So I prayed first. I said, Father, let your will be done concerning him. I didn't know what the issue was. So I began to pray and I placed my hand on the back of his head. Montreux had his hand on the front of his head and we began to pray for him. And for some reason, Montreux asked, can you hear me? And the guy said, uh-huh. And Trail said, can you hear me? He said, mm-hmm. And Trail asked the lady, his mother was standing there. This guy was about 30 something years old. He says, has he always been deaf? And the mother said, yes. <laughs> the interesting thing was Trail and I were both shocked that it actually worked. <laughs> because, no, seriously, because sometimes you go, oh, I'm going to lay hands and you're going to get your, seriously, on the inside, you're really not going to admit, right? But it actually, we begin to pray and this man who was deaf all of his life heard us. So, this scripture says this, Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. If he has given you a key, that means he never mentioned the lock. Many of us are struggling trying to figure out the lock. He has given you the key. That's all you have to worry about. The lock is intricate. The lock has mechanisms, gears that turn on the inside. Don't worry about that. Focus on the key. It's much simpler. Stand to your feet, please. In order to believe this, you must believe like a child. My last scripture. But Jesus called the children to him and said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter in. You must receive it like a child because children believe anything. You tell them they're going to Disney World and guess what? They're counting down the days. They're packing their suitcase. They're telling all of their friends. Think about it. How come you don't do that? We're adults now. We have all these encumbrances, all of these disappointments. And so we stop believing like children because somebody told us it's childish, it's foolish. But unless you believe the kingdom like a child, it won't come. How many are dedicated to believe in this thing? Come on, pure. That's what this child is talking about. That's what he's talking about, pure, right? 